treat uh, cardiac constant cardiac failure, uh, but they should be used only when it is decompensated for the patient. That means it's not uh, the heart is now hemodynamically so unstable that it is threatening the life of the patient. Okay, if not, uh, if that if that is not the case, uh, you better not use this type of anotropic drugs for a long period of time. And basically, I, I was talking about digitalis or cardiac glycosides. Okay, cardiac glycosides are non. If you if I tell cardiac glycoside or if I say digital drugs. Okay, these are one and the same drugs. Both of the two drugs I've given you, Digi uh, um, digoxin, digitoxin. Both of them are um, cardiac glycosides. Okay, and then cardiac glycosides, they are available tablets and they are sometimes used as um, um, non-emergent, uh, non-acute uh, congestive heart failure. Uh, they are used for symptomatic relief as well. And they are given in ambulatory methods like uh, they are given the drugs to take home okay but uh, other drugs that we are going to talk about like other anotropic drugs they are only used in emergency or in uh, icu and ccu setups okay because it needs monitoring it needs so many other uh, procedures and um, uh, other methods or other uh, you have to give attention to other uh, parameters of the body like uh, like uh, uh, there might be arrhythmia there might be uh, uh, hemorrhages because you are increasing the bp there might there might be um, uh, increased um, incidences of ischemia of heart uh, angina pectoris will become worsen if if somebody is already suffering from angina pectoris there is a risk of um resurfacing okay if it is compensated it might there is a risk of decompensation of angina pectoris okay why because these drugs will increase the heart load they will not decrease like like if you are using nitrates what were you doing in angina pectoris nitrates were vasodilating uh, coronary vasodilatation as well as um, peripheral vasodilatation and both of them were contributing towards lowering the workload for the heart but these drugs, since it's beta blocker, a beta agonist, alpha agonist, dopaminergic agonist drugs, these drugs will increase the load. Okay, so we'll start talking about uh, we'll start talking with dopamine. Okay, what is dopamine? Dopamine we have been talking about for I think uh, since we started um, this pharmacology class. And since why it is so because it is wide uh, wide acting drug okay we we call it as love hormone we call it as um, uh, rewarding centers uh, hormone that means all drug addict people they they are addicted to those drugs because of dopamine they say okay so but other than that there are so many other uh, activities that dopamine and other these drugs will do okay so dopamine basically uh, activates the d1 receptor okay where is d1 receptor it's is uh, they're all over our body but they are specifically in in uh, kidneys okay and these drugs uh, dopamine is very selective to that in low dose that means less than or equal to somewhat two microgram per kg per minute dose okay so we are talking about kg per minute because we are giving this drug um, via infusion okay don't give it uh, any other way no oral no i am nothing but uh, and not even bolus uh, injection we give it from the drip okay infusion so we should infuse this drug in low dose low dose here means two microgram per kg per minute okay it dilates mesenteric and renal blood vessel increases the uh, uh, glomerular filtration rate and sodium excretion in the body so what basically it does is um, mesenteric is in the abdomen but if you consider this renal blood vessels then it will dilate the renal blood vessel, which means more blood will be perfusion to the uh, perfused to the kidneys inside. OK, and the, again, on top of that, it will increase the GFR. That means in renal failure patients, in anuric patients who are not uh, able to pass urine in education amount, uh, especially in ICU and in CCU settings after uh, major surgeries or in case of uh, renal failures as well. Um, we can use dopamine uh, in low dose okay this is called renal dose of dopamine 
basically this is not used this in this do dose we don't use it for uh, heart failure for heart failure we use this dose which is called moderately a normal dose B beta 1 receptor and uh, when we give it um, more than 2 point okay more than 2 to um, all, all up to 5 uh, microgram per kg then we call it normal moderately high dose so what it, it will in addition to D1 receptor, it will also start activating beta 1 receptor. And you know that beta 1 receptor is there in the heart itself. So by by increasing by activating the beta 1 receptor, you are going to increase your heart rate, increase your conductivity, increase, increase the uh, sorry, increase the uh, contractility of the heart. So this is very important for us when we want to treat the patient with decompensated cardiac failure. Okay, guys, decompensated only in the final stages. Final stages when uh, the, the patient is um, almost uh, gone. So to save that patient, we are we use this drug. Okay, but if we keep on increasing the dose, uh, it will start acting in alpha one receptors as well. And you know where are the alpha receptors? Alpha one receptors are there in everywhere in your blood vessels, especially in the arteries. And uh, if you if you activate this receptor, alpha receptor, then vasoconstrictions will be there. And if vaso uh, blood vessels are constricted, then you know what happens. It will increase the cardiac preload and afterload, especially uh, afterload, because uh, the arterial system is there for afterload this is the work uh, the space where blood uh, heart needs to pump the blood so if you constrict those vessels then the heart um, preload uh, afterload will be significantly increased and again this drug is able to worsen angina and in precipitate uh, angina pectoris and mi okay so this is also very not very good if you give in high dose that means in high dose, it, it can block, it can activate alpha receptors. But I have told you several times uh, from the beginning of uh, the, your admission to MBBS that if you find the receptor very specific or, or you, I, if I say that this is very um, selective to one of the receptors and it doesn't mean that other receptors won't be affected. If this dopamine is able to affect D1, B1, beta 1 and alpha 1 all, then it will do so in any dose. Okay. The difference is that if you if you increase the dose, then alpha one receptor uh, activation will be prominent. But if you use it in high dose, then uh, in moderately high dose, beta one receptor is activated. Okay, but here some portion of alpha one receptors are also activated. Why I am telling you this now right now? Because even if you give dopamine in moderately high dose, alpha one receptor can get activated sometimes. So it can somehow increase the preload for the heart okay and after load for the heart it will never de decrease it will either not change or increase and there is chance that since some alpha receptors will be activated somehow there is chance that they, there might be there might be precipitation of uh, this angina and other uh, similar diseases indications so what we do with dopamine is we we reserve that for the last okay we don't start using dopamine and I'm, that is not the case with this one okay this dose renal dose is very good for those people who are anuric after you know in, in the icu okay anuric means they are not adequately passing urine and even not responding to diuretics you have, you have given uh, furosemide you have given um, an adequate dose to those patients who are not passing urine but still there is no urine then there is one still one method this dopamine renal dose dopamine two microgram per kg per minute can be administered for those those patients okay so the, the things i just told you right now i have written it there selective beta 1 agonist given iv okay selective one cardiogenic shock due to mi not commonly used because of potential to produce angina and arrhythmia and increase afterload okay this thing is always there and this is all because of uh alpha 1 receptor okay and acute heart failure accompanying mi cardiac surgery where rise of bp is required though uh, i have mentioned this dopamine before dobutamin but basically we start with dobutamin okay because dobutamin is relatively safe i'll tell you in the coming slide 
uh, low dose improved GFR use, used in anuria, especially post MI and cardiac surgery. So this is basically the most prominent use is there for renal dose. Cardiac dose will be given uh, on, uh, when, for example, dope vitamin is not um, efficient enough. Okay. So what is dope vitamin? Dope vitamin is very, very similar to dopamine. Okay. It is derivative of dopamine but it is not acting in dopaminergic receptors, D1, D2, none of them, okay? Uh, only chemical structure is there, it's related chemically only, okay? But uh, for beta receptor, yes, it is highly selective, more than uh, dopamine, it is selective as beta 1, okay? Accents, still I can say that accents will be both in alpha and beta, alpha, alpha is also involved, but it is more selective, okay? More selective, more. It is more selective to beta 1. Uh, that means it has potential not to change preload and afterload. Okay. That is why it is quite uh, precious, but still we don't use it too much because I'll tell you in the uh, coming slides. Clinically employed doses increase cardiac in uh, the dose that we use, it increases cardiac contraction and cardiac output. Cardiac output will be increased because uh, the force of contraction is directly proportional to cardiac output. If it is contracted forcefully, then the speed of the blood increases and the cardiac output also increases. So that is beneficial over here because we want that because the uh, uh, person is suffering from cardiac failure. Um, but and it doesn't much affect the heart rate. It doesn't change BP much. Okay, I don't say it is doesn't. It doesn't change the SR or BP. I didn't say that. It will because if you increase cardiac output, some BP will be uh, increased, isn't it? But uh, if you remember hypertensive class, uh, the peripheral resistance is very highly sensitive to heart rate and uh, BP and heart rate. Okay, so if you increase peripheral resistance or dilate or uh, constrict your blood vessels are, uh, in your body, then BP will shoot up because it's a huge area all over your body. But heart is just a pump. If you just increase slightly, very slightly uh, cardiac output, then the BP will increase even more slightly. Okay, uh, so it, proportionately, it is not as effective as if you are uh, uh, constricting your blood vessels. If you increase your cardiac output um, by uh, constrict uh, or by increasing the um, force of contraction, then it doesn't change too much of BP. Okay. Uh, but does not change preload and afterload as well. That is why it is used as anotropic anotrop effect in pump failure, heart failure, okay, MI, cardiac surgery, and severe CHF. And I told you uh, before as well, okay, this drug is there. Uh, you, you use this drug before dopamine uh, in, in clean type of CHF, okay, in other with renal failures and other effective, and sometimes if you don't have dope vitamin, then dopamine is administered. IV, okay. So all of these dopamine, dopamine, dopamine and dopamine select uh, is not commonly used because of potential to produce enzyme or arrhythmias. Okay, preferred in acute as a uh, heart failure accompanying MI and uh, cardiac uh, surgery. Okay, not commonly used. This is the point I wanted to show you. Why not commonly used? Because uh, in long term, did I write that? So what happens is for long term, it is not very beneficial. One, it has it is very short lasting, uh, lasting benefits. Dopamine, dopamine, the, the sort of life is very low. And uh, if you use it repeatedly, you know from uh, function of receptors that if you continuously activate some receptor, then eventually there will be down regulation of the receptor. Same thing happens here. If you continuously activate beta one, alpha one receptors and dopamine receptor continuously uh, every day then that will lead to desensitization of the receptors. Uh, then, of course, if you use it regularly, then there will be tachyphylaxis. The, uh, the effect will keep on decreasing. Uh, so, in some cases, this will, this will cause cardiotoxicity. Okay? If, you, if, if you are forcing something to beat faster and more forcefully every day, like, like if, you, if you are uh, beating this this uh, donkey or persuading this donkey to run around with heavy load for 
every, every day then this life span of this donkey will go down it will get uh, it will get sick isn't it so these things happens uh, so that so we are we need to be very careful that we don't use these drugs until and unless it's absolutely necessary apart from uh, this uh, dopamine and dopamine and, and uh, digoxin there are other anotropic drugs as well so uh, basically I, I i am since two days i have i am uh, explaining you why these uh, anotropic drugs shouldn't be used uh, for uh, shouldn't be used for as regularly as other drugs um, so this also applies to this phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors this phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor is here milrinone and enamrinone okay or enamrinone is sometimes called amrinone don't um, don't get confused it's called amrinone in some books enamrinone in some books but milrinone is still uh, there okay so what does this do this is very selective phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor and phosphodiesterase 3 is uh, located in heart muscles vascular sorry heart muscles vascular smooth muscles and bronchial bronchial muscles bronchial smooth muscles these three places um, uh, phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme is responsible to break down cyclic amp to uh, normal amp okay no, the cyclic nature is destroyed and after uh, and, and after destroying the of the cyclic nature cyclic amp becomes inactivated so if you are blocking this enzyme then you are increasing the concentration of cyclic amp which in in, in, in turn will will just act as if as if you are activating this dopaminergic receptor so you are basically hacking inside okay instead of uh, activating the receptor which is the proper way to uh, increase the concentration of amp so if you activate beta 1 receptor you increase the concentration of amp uh, but if you use enamrinone and milrinone you directly increase the concentration of amp cyclic amp without uh, touching even dopamine okay by you are now bypassing the main thing okay what is the benefit the thing i just talked about is not there what did i talk about in dopamine and dopamine i said that if the receptor is activated regularly every day then there will be a tachyphylaxis this doesn't happen over here okay but all the other adverse effects and bad effects and other things that i just talked about with on other anotropics it's still there okay so increase cyclic amp in smooth muscle that means you can you can use this for uh, for uh, hypertension you, you can use this for bronchodilatory function and even you can use this for increasing the uh, con uh, contraction force of the heart so because it is anotropic drug plus anotropic drug and dilator so we call it anodilator not vasodilator is there vasodilator plus anotropic anotropic drugs plus vasodilator is called to anodilator drugs so i hope you understood uh, all these phosphodiesterase inhibitors in the names enamrinone and mildrinone these are called anodilators and is there a beneficial point of course the uh, if you remember dopamine is i said that dopamine uh, precipitates mi and um, ischemic heart disease because it increases the afterload and preload anodilators here decreases the afterload and preload and increases the contractility of course which is much more favorable uh, than this but we don't use it uh, as much uh, too much it was initially when it was brought to the attention it was it gave it gained a lot of attention okay guys so they thought ki, this is the now the uh, ultimate drug for uh, heart failure uh, we want to if you want to um, revive the fading heart okay but later on still we don't know how uh, but later on what happens is because of we gathered how many adverse effects it can cause so this thrombocytopenia is big because it is one of the most common one okay and it is the one which limits the use okay thrombocytopenia and nausea time uh, abdominal pain arrhythmia liver damage arrhythmia is another one liver damage and fever these are all adverse effects of this particular phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor okay so um, and in some there might be no adverse effect but the tolerance 
is there like other do dopamine. Why? This is not because of later on it was found that tolerance is still there with inhibitorinone and milutinone as well. Why? Because again, um, this calcium channel channels will not um, responding to cyclic GMP and cyclic AMP if they come uh, at, at regular basis. Okay, if they are high concentrated in regular basis, then calcium channels will start ignoring them. Okay, so because of that, there might be tolerance. So, but tolerance is much more less than the other drugs. Increased mortality, we don't know why, but there is increased mortal mortality in patients. Immediately the patient may survive, but for the long period of time, increased mortality is there, and it is there with all anotropic drugs, I told you that, again, right? in long-term use. So because of these two things, uh, and both of them, we don't perfectly understand why, okay? And because so many scientists and researchers and published paper about this, ki the, 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 the short-term, long-term use is not as effective as we thought, then the use of this drug again started to uh, climb down, okay? So, uh, if you talk about individual drugs, uh, milrinone is more safe, okay? Inamrinone, um, if you compare inamrinone and milrinone, adverse effects of milrinone are uh, more, uh, less, sorry, less severe, okay? Less thrombocytopenia and less other defects. Uh, used in severe effect, severe, yeah, yeah, you know that. So, what is the difference between inamrinone and milrinone? Very same selectivity is there. Uh, milrinone is highly selective towards your heart, not with uh, this bronchus and other other places. So, it is more selective to heart, lesser than thrombocytopenia. It gives slightly more promising results than inamrinone. So, it is considered to be better than inamrinone. But I told you what are the adverse effects and why we don't basically use this drug. So the other uh, drugs, other group, another group of drugs that we are now discussing, we'll discuss is uh, these vasodilators and diuretics. Okay, so vasodilators and diuretics, I put it in the same category because for a uh, donkey analogy, then you see removing this load over here is make, is making this donkey quite happy, isn't it? So we are doing this. Uh, in our in, in our patients. So what do we do? One thing you you dial you you uh, use diuretics. You use diuretics and diuretics literally is the same. Okay. So you you have taken out the sacs over there from this cart. But what we do is we take out a portion of blood in form of urine. Okay. That means we are removing some volume from the heart uh, from the body as uh, in the blood in the blood vessel. The blood vessel blood vessel compartment becomes volumously lower okay so that means the heart will have a better time pumping this heart uh, pumping the blood throughout your body so i will not be discussing in great details about this because one diuretics is covered uh, in in this uh, hypertension and it will be covered in the next semester as well when we talk about uh, renal functions okay diuretics and ace inhibitors why ace inhibitor i told you that they are more balanced vasodilators they are vaso uh, veno as well as arterio dilators uh, dilator okay so uh, if uh, they are they are able to decrease your decrease your preload as well as afterload that means again uh, it's not exactly that you are removing this uh, um, the the load from the cart but you can anal anal uh, analogoize what you call is is how you do is either either you are greasing the wheels or you are making the road buttery smooth okay or it is you can say downhill okay those that sort of uh, analogy can be implemented with uh vasodilators because they are going to decrease the total peripheral resistance uh, and even if the volume is uh, not decreased uh, then the, even since the blood vessels are easy to for the f blood to flow the heart will be um, uh, will have heart will have easy time doing its job. So, what are these vasodilators that we use? Okay, so there are basically uh, we can divide these vasodilators in 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 these three 
special divisions. One is reducing afterload. Okay, the one which reduces afterload, they are all these uh, afterload reducing means which are venous, uh, sorry, arterial dilatation. Okay, nitroproside, sodium nitroproside we are talking about. Okay, uh, NA donor, hydrolyzin, which is a very potent vasodilator, calcium channel agoni agonist, which is also a vasodilator, alpha blockers, also vasodilators, beta 2 stimulants, also vasodilators, and, and nitrates and niceritide. Niceritide we haven't talked about, but I will mention in the, in the coming slides. It's not very important uh, in the uh, syllabus, but it's a very new drug, niceritide. I'll be talking about that in a moment, okay? And the drug which decreases venous dilators are nitrates, nitroside, furosemide, and EC inhibitors, you can see. And diuretics are, uh, you can see furosemide would reduce the venous return towards the heart. So this figure will show how these vasodilators, even in this anotropic drugs, will reduce the preload and afterload so that it might, it will make the heart, job of the heart, more easy. Okay. More commonly used diuretics here we have is these three. Okay. Furosemide, hydrochlorothiazide or thiazide and spironolactone. Okay. Furosemide is loop diuretic and it is the highest efficacy diuretic. It's a high ceiling efficacy diuretic. Uh, that means it is able to um, uh, take out large volume of salt and water out of your body uh, incomparable to spironolactone and thiazides okay so it is high efficacy high ceiling uh, so obviously if you need to drop the uh, load for the heart immediately in very rapid manner furosemide is always good not only for acute cases for chronic ca chronic cases as well low dose of uh, furosemide in their um, recipe of drugs will make their heart much more easier to beat okay thiazide again is not as efficacious, efficacious uh, as furosemide but thiazide retains uh, for example uh, if i if you compare thiazide and furosemide furosemide in, uh, initially will uh, uh, will um, decrease the uh, volume of blood circulating in your blood vessels in a significant manner, but later on tachyphylaxis will be there. Okay, efficacy will be reduced with each dose, but that and the diuretic effect. But thiazide also will uh, show the same effect uh, after a few days of using. Uh, the efficacy of diuresis will go down. For example, uh, in the initial days, you 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 had a diuresis of, um, for example, one liter. Uh, then uh, after some time it might decrease with thiazide also it will decrease but thiazide what it retain it will, it will retain the vasodilatory action okay vasodilatory reaction will remain so it, it is sometimes considered as uh, overall vasodilator okay mild vasodilator but thiazide is also a diuretic initially it works as a diuretic but later on the 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 mechanism of action action will shift okay so that is why it is also very good drug, but not very high efficacious. And, and the spironolactone, spironolactone uh, you learn, I think you have learned already, it's a low efficacy diuresis, okay? It's an adjuvant diuresis, diuretic. It is not used you know, for uh, those who have, who are, who need high volume of diuresis. But one, one very good point with this spironolactone is it is aldosterone antagonist, if you remember. So aldosterone, because of aldosterone, it has some beneficial effects in the heart. Uh, what does it do? It will reverse the uh, or arrest the process of development of uh, heart failure. How it does? One thing, spironolactone will block uh, aldosterone action in the heart and the um, aldosterone is solely responsible for heart enlargement, hypertrophy of the heart. Okay. So sodium and water retention will decrease the circulating blood. Uh, and then uh, excess residual volume will also be decreased. So it will, which will reduce uh, the preload and afterload. So this is how it does. Does not reduce heart failure progression only for symptomatic relief. Not talking about this, okay. This one, these two is not for. Okay, guys. Uh, it is not for spironolactone, it is only for furosemide and thiazides. 
spermalactone has some effect on disease progression. I told you about that last class and I'll repeat uh, in coming uh, slides. So talking about spironolactone, spironolactone and uh, eplerinone, these are two drugs that have some effect in disease progression. Okay, some effect in this by antagonizing aldosterone. I was talking about this. Uh, aldosterone is responsible for heart fibrosis, arrhythmias and uh, baroreceptor signaling malfunction. Okay, so what do you mean by this? Aldosterone always uh, keeps eye on the baroreceptor if BP is increased or decreased, it will respond by by altering the uh, sodium uh, and other electrolyte levels, um, either retaining them or losing them from the kidneys. So it has overall manipulating effect on the kidneys. OK, and other than that, it is able to uh, create fibrosis by um, increasing some of the oncogenes. OK, I'll be uh, showing you on one slide that it, it will it will. Uh, aldosterone. Will promote some of the oncogenes in the heart, which is responsible for uh, increasing the size of the heart. OK. Uh, so they are used in severe heart failure, used in severe heart failure with They are used in Uber. Why did I stop writing that? So these are used in severe heart failure with decompensatory uh, effect in the heart. OK, so and then alpernon has more uh, fewer side effects um, than uh, this spironolactone. And basically we call these drugs as potassium sparing diuretics. So why it is potassium sparing? Because uh, diuretics, other diuretics that I named, pyrosemide and thiazides, uh, both of them, even other non uh, other diuretics that I didn't name, like uh, astrazolamide and others, they always lose sodium as well as potassium. Okay, losing sodium is okay. We wanted that, but losing potassium is will, will create uh, hypokalemia. Okay, so it might because of that it might cause severe problems in the heart, heartbeat and heart rate. Okay, so to to prevent that, uh, either we have to uh, give potassium additional from outside or you have to use one drug that will um, spare potassium. OK, that means this one uh, spironolactone and alprinolone. These are uh, the drugs that will spare potassium uh, from getting it out from the kidneys. So it will it will help accumulate uh, potassium inside your blood. It will not let it go out of your kidneys. OK, so this thing uh, will give you some protective effect against the digitalis if you remember. If you remember, digoxin will have lesser adverse effects in presence of uh, potassium. If you remember, because digoxin is competing with potassium for its space, its place in sodium potassium ATPase, which is its own uh, mechanism of action, isn't it? Am I online, guys? Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Are, you are you understanding too? Yes, sir. OK. Yes, yes sir. sir. So. Other group of drugs that we have is ACE inhibitors and ARVs. If you if you remember from last class, uh, ACE inhibitors are uh, which what are these? These are. Um, what is it? ARV is losartan, telmisartan, valsartan, and AC inhibitor is anybody naming me that? Enalapril. Enalapril and Captopril and Captopril. Yeah. Captopril. Okay. So these drugs, uh, you know the difference between these drugs. One is one is AC inhibitor, and another one uh, inhibitor means it will uh, stop the production of angiotensin and ARVs are the ones which will solve the function of angiotensin by blocking the angiotensin receptor, isn't it? So what are these? These are balanced vasodilators. I'm going to I'm, I was talking about this earlier as well. So these are balanced means they, they dilate veins and arteries in the same uh, proportion. OK, not like calcium channel blockers, which will increase nitrates. Nitrates basically is uh, venous dilator. And in high dose only arterial dilator. This one is not discriminating. It will do everything in your own pace. Okay, normal. 
reduce both pre and after load we know that improves renal hemodynamics we have been talking i don't want to repeat every time that uh, because because ac inhibitors will increase uh, the ingoing blood vessels diameter um, outgoing blood vessels diameter from the nephron more than ingoing okay afferent is more than efferent uh, dilatation that uh, efficiently decreases somewhat decreases the uh, pressure of the blood in the uh, kidneys which will make them um, cardio uh, sorry nephroprotective okay uh, i told you that even with um, hypertensive patients uh, ac inhibitors will prevent uh, nephrotoxicity okay in hypertension as well as without hypertension if we have for example diabetic nephropathy we use ac inhibitors just to prevent them from degrading okay not uh, for bp purpose at all so this thing will improve the hemodynamic of ren uh, renal system and reduce the wrong long term remodeling again i discuss this with spironolactone like spironolactone ac inhibitors also blocks the aldosterone as well okay so if it blocks aldosterone again Mm, then the same effect as spironolactone is seen with AC inhibitors as well. So just to summarize very very quickly, I'm not going to read out all this uh, thing, uh, all the slide, all the words I have in this uh, slide. But <clears throat> I I gave you this thing in the previous class as well. There are three modes of angiotensin two working. Okay. One is it decreases peripheral uh, resistance by vaso vaso uh, that means altered peripheral resistance by it uh, constrict the blood vessel by angiotensin system again okay? so uh, and then enhancement of peripheral neuroanalytic transmission other other functions are also there but basically it's directly vasoconstricting uh, for altered peripheral resistance for altered renal functions directly increase the sodium reabsorption in proximal tubule uh, and so they have some altered renal function uh, action as well which are used for protect the toxicity towards the kidneys okay and the third is first one you use this for hypertension second we use this in hypertension as well as in other renal diseases and the third one is used for congestive card failure so uh, not only for congestive card failure even in hypertension it is uh, able to uh, protect from heart from getting hypertrophied okay so what i was non hemodynamically mediated effects is increasing the expression of proto oncogenes that i told you just now in the previous slide that these oncogenes are responsible for proliferation of this fibroid and other uh, fibrous and other tissues in the matrix of the heart okay again it can in uh, increase the production of growth factors you can see and increase the synthesis of extracellular matrix proteins that means all these uh, connective tissues around uh, these uh, cells okay because of these three the heart will get hypertrophied okay so increase the level of uh, increase the size of the heart is always there so this thing is the one we we want it more okay in heart failure that means if you use angiotensin receptor antagonist and angiotensin AAC inhibitors and ARBs, uh, we protect the heart from this mechanism of action. Okay, guys. So you can see what is the result: vascular and cardiac hypertrophy and remodeling. So if angiotensin 2 is able to do this, then blocking this will prevent vascular and cardiac hypertrophy. So this is very very beneficial for the patients. Somebody's microphone is not uh, switched off, so I'm hearing some hissing sounds. So, just to repeat the side effects, side effects of um, uh, this AC inhibitors, uh, I, talk, I talked about um, in adrenal aldosterone is decreases aldosterone, so uh, it will have some effect on aldosterone system. So, since it is constricting the blood vessels, hypertension will be uh, dilating the blood vessels, hypertension will be there. Okay, so if, it, if the dilatation is too much, uh, then there will be hypertension, acute lo um, loss of decrease of BP will be there. Okay, and the same with the kidneys. Okay, and last time I just told you about this as well. So it will create dicrof because of 
bradykinin it will preserve bradykinin it will not let it degrade so you know that ac inhibitors will degrade um, uh, engine uh, engine engine uh, converting enzyme as uh, which in converts uh, which converts engine engine 1 into engine engine 2 as well as from bradykinin to its metabolite inactive metabolites okay so these are the adverse effects just just for your uh, revision from previous class as well so today's class also it is quite necessary so apart from these drugs that we discussed other vasodilators are there okay so uh, other one others are hydrolyzine it's an arterial vasodilator usually used in renal in insufficiency patients we'll be talking about hydrolyzine in coming uh, renal system okay nitrates we talked about this nitrates so not only nitroprusside nitrates can be also be used but nitroprusside here will be more uh, effective because it is more potent. Nitrates are not very potent, they are there for uh, enzyme effectories, but for uh, this acute heart failure, nitrates alone might not be sufficient. Okay, Sodium nitroprusside, some might be sufficient here because uh, it is more uh, aggressive than uh, nitrates. And sodium nitroprusside, so, um, sodium nitroprusside is not very selective to the um, um, coronary arteries. Okay, Because of coronary arteries uh, are not um, responding to uh, sodium nitroprusside, we don't use it generally in uh, enzyme effectories, but we use nitrates. Okay, so these are the other other vasodilators. So last thing, not the last exactly. I am. I have to talk about mesoretide as well. But last thing here with is with beta blockers. So beta blockers is very confusing. Okay, here. So I told you here last time as well that we use beta agonists like dobutamine, do, do and you use beta blockers like. Uh, pro 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 propanolol and atenolol and others so okay, why are we doing it one thing is that we never overlap these drugs okay so i i showed you last time the chart okay i'll, I'll go to that chart okay this chart you can see this iv anotrope that is dopaminergic drugs these are only given in these levels okay and beta blocker is given in the lower level so but still beta blocker given in this uh, less severe forms of uh, heart failure we can have some adverse effect like it will it will decompensate the heart okay so heart will start beating more slowly so that is why we need to be careful but still we want to give it because we have seen we have seen that uses of beta blocker long periods will significantly increase the um, lifespan of this patient okay but given that he won't be able to do vigorous exercises and other things because it heart heart is now modulated towards the towards what i can say is lesser mode of the heart okay so it cannot be too fast it cannot be too con uh, it cannot contract too forcefully but since doing that it is conserving its life okay it's getting rest it's just like giving a patient a good rest uh, who is suffering from, for example, um, muscle fatigue, okay, muscle, muscles are weak, uh, so he can't run. Anotrope is that you you, uh, you pick out a danda and tell, the, uh, tell that man that if you don't run, then I'll kill you. Okay, then he'll start running, isn't it? Uh, that is what anotropes do. Uh, but beta blockers is that you provide him a good bed and lie, ask him to lie down. And if he lies down for two or three days, he'll be able to do slightly more job. No? So that is the uh, uh, sentiment over here. So what we do is with beta blockers, like if we are limiting, uh, if we are, if, if we are uh, limiting the function of the heart, that means if we, if we analyze this with this donkey, then what we do is we ask the donkey to move very, very slowly, uh, baby steps, okay? I've written that baby steps. So baby steps, as far as you can, you go. That means he will rest and go in baby steps very, very slowly. That means he is, he is traveling somehow. That means you are leaving. The heart is moving. Heart is beating. The, the cart is moving. Okay, here. But it is very, very slow and uh, it is not as efficacious as, as it would have been. Okay. But this will save the life of donkey and it will it will prolong the life of donkey okay used in stable to moderate uh, moderately severe degree so moderately severe degree what we do is in moderately severe degree we use this this is the dotted line over here so dotted line 
and tells you that uh, you should use it cautiously. OK, so. Uh, to see, uh, the drugs here we use is metoprolol, bisoprolol and cardiolol. What they do? They act by reducing the heart rate, upgrading the beta receptor, uh, attenuation of adverse effects of catecholamines. OK, so in heart rate, uh, when you are uh, getting your uh, heart failure, your body wants to increase the pressure. So your uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline and dopamine is continuously releasing. And on top, uh, because of that, your heart will feel the need and urge to beat more uh, violently. That is physiological. Okay, but if you give beta blocker, that physiological signal is also blocked. That means the heart is now not needed to work uh, vigorously. Okay, and the other thing I forgot to mention is this one: up regulation of beta receptor. So, like dobutamine. If you continuously activate that receptor, there will be down regulation of beta receptor. But if you are using beta blockers in heart failure, in compensated portion of heart failure, in mild forms of heart failure, you are using beta blocker in that patient. Somehow, if that patient comes to decompensated uh, heart failure, acute heart failure, and he has the background of beta blockers being used, then if you use dobutamine in that patient, then the efficacy will rise, shoot up. Why? Because of uses of beta blocker continuously, there uh, there is up regulation of the receptor. Okay, so it, the alpha alpha one agonistic drugs or beta one agonistic drugs will have more sensitivity towards this disease or or the condition if the patient is using or has been using beta receptor blocker in the past. I hope you understood. Understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. So the question here is, shouldn't be used in decompensated and uh, patient and episodes of acute heart failure? So not I will not talk about it too much. But uh, this is this is a thing I have been uh, talking about since the beginning of this chapter. So this is how beta blockers work and remember beta, beta blockers are the ones uh, the drugs that has some um, ability to either arrest the disease progression or to to reverse some of the uh, uh, disease progression. OK, not other drugs. Last but not the least, I was talking about niceritide. OK, what is this niceritide all about? You will understand what this niceritide is uh, by if you know something about BNP and ANP. OK, BNP and ANP. These are beta natriuretic peptide or brain natriuretic uretic peptide or ANP is. Uh, atrial natriuretic peptide. That means the uh, atrium and ventricles, if they are stretched, OK, they are produced. They produce a substance called uh, BNP. OK, so why it is needed? So whenever your heart, your your heart needs, uh, your body needs more BP, uh, then uh, what happens is that how is how does the body feel that you need more uh, pressure of the heart? So if the heart muscle has some sort of indicators in it, okay. So if the heart muscles, while beating, are forcefully scratched more than previous times, more than normal, then your heart, your physiology feels that something is wrong. Uh, my heart muscle is stressed. That means I'm feeling difficulty in pressing all the blood out. So what we, I need to do is to is to uh, increase the uh, force of contraction of this heart. Otherwise, I might fail. OK, so that is the signal given by this natriuretic peptide. OK, and natriuretic peptide by its name is natriuretic. That means it will um, uh, it will have some effect on sodium excretion. OK, uh, and if sodium excretion is there, then sodium alone can dilate and uh, constrict the blood vessels and increase and decrease the level of uh, contraction in the heart. OK, so this neseritide is nothing. It's just a copy of human uh, recombinant BNP. OK, so they are not they are the same uh, chemicals that is produced from the heart to regulate the heart uh, contractility, but it is 
made outside. Okay, it is a very new drug. We don't know much about it. We don't know how to produce, and and even we don't know how this BNP and ANP actually work. So we don't know actually how nicotinide works. So it is still under development. So the the one of the reason they are giving is it is increases cyclic GNP like uh, like this enamrinone and milrinone, but not by blocking the uh, phosphodiesterase enzymes. Okay, but somehow it increases. We don't know how. Okay, so it is also used in acutely decompensated CHF like dobutamine, dopamine, IV, digitalis. All these things uh, is used exactly like nicotinide, and uh, it's still very very expensive. And I have never seen this drug in Nepal. Okay. So uh, this is the end of my uh, class. Before ending the class, I just wanted to show you this chart again. Okay, so you can see AC inhibitor here is given in the whole portion. So that is why if you diagnose a person with uh, congestive cardiac failure, you can effectively start with AC inhibitor because AC inhibitor will will be used in any stage of the disease. And it can have some capability to arrest the process. That means it will be beneficial if you give it early. The same with the beta blocker. Beta blockers is also beneficial if you give it early. Okay, in later phases, <coughs> you don't give it. Diuretics uh, are saved for later uh, phases. So this is very effective drug. If you um, if you uh, de decrease the volume of circulating blood then it is very good for the heart for it to pump. And digoxin here is basically uh, restored for very severe uh, type of uh, things. And this is, mind you, this is oral, okay, oral digoxin. IV anotrope is there, digoxin, IV anotrope is digoxin, dovitamin, and others given IV. But digoxin here is oral one. Oral one can be given in the uh, more severe cases. Spironolactone also in more severe cases and IV vasodilators and IV anotropes only in emergent cases, not others, okay? So this is how you should, you should uh, uh, give drugs to the heart failure patient. So the bell has rung, I, I think you have heard it. So this much is for today. If you have any questions, you can ask. Any questions? Sir, sir, uh, sir, that's a phosphatized in smooth muscle acts like GMP, 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 degradation, yeah. degradation. Yes, cyclic GMP in smooth muscles, cyclic AMP in the heart. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it is cyclic GMP in the smooth muscles also, it will, it will constrict. Who is this? May I know your name? Sir, Ujjal. Ujjal. Okay, good question. Very, very good question. So, uh, I am downloading the attendance right now. I hope I have downloaded. Mm. Okay, I have downloaded. Okay, then, now this much is for today. Uh, we have another class tomorrow. Uh, we can discuss, uh, we can even discuss practicals or uh, tomorrow one problem is there if I start uh, uh, the last chapter we have today is uh, anti-arrhythmic drugs and we if we start anti-arrhythmic today tomorrow then um, maybe it will it will extend to after Tihar and I might be in leave after Tihar so I don't know what to start tomorrow but still if you have questions you can ask me and if you uh, we can discuss other topics and even you can start some portions from uh, and terrific drugs. I can I can give you the physiological aspects so that later on you will understand. So I think that this will be the best idea. I will start uh, some uh, physiological processes and other uh, normal physiological changes in the heart and uh, electrolytes changes in the heart, action potential, other things in the coming class tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, you are free to leave uh, now. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir.